Hello, in this video we're going to look at the effect of a negative production externality when dealing with a competitive market, a monopoly market, and then we'll also see what is socially optimal. We'll consider the following market, the inverse market demand, price equals 100 minus Q, the marginal cost is constant at $20, the marginal external cost is $30, so let's start with the competitive outcome. In perfect competition, price equals marginal cost, setting 100 minus Q equal to the 20. And solving for the output, we get 80. And the price is $20, it's just marginal cost. Or we could plug this 80 back into the inverse market demand. 100 minus 80 is also 20. And now let's look at the monopoly outcome. We're going to get the monopolist revenue, price times quantity. 100 minus Q times Q, simplifying, getting marginal revenue, the derivative of the revenue function with respect to Q, we get back 100 minus 2Q, and setting marginal revenue equal to marginal cost, and solving for Q, the monopolist will produce 40 units at a price of $60 per unit, plugging this 40 back into the inverse market demand. For the socially optimum outcome, note that the marginal social cost is going to be the marginal cost or marginal private cost plus the marginal external cost. And so for the socially optimal outcome, this condition must hold. Price equals marginal social cost, where the marginal social cost is just marginal cost plus marginal external cost. So plugging in the values. The optimal level of output is 50, and the price should then also be $50. So to sum up, the competitive outcome, the monopoly outcome, and again, both of these outcomes are ignoring the externality, the socially optimum outcome. And what we want to do now is we want to calculate the economic surplus under the three outcomes. An economic surplus, or total surplus, is just going to be the area between the height of the demand curve, which is the marginal benefit, and the marginal social cost curve. So we're going to start with the competitive outcome. Uh, in the competitive outcome, 80 units are being produced. What is socially optimum is 50 units, however. So anyways, what is the economic surplus? It's going to be the difference between the height of the demand curve and the marginal social cost curve, all the way up to this 50th unit. So that's that part of the equation, one-half base times height. So part of the economic surplus here is that these 50 units have provided net value to society. However, under perfect competition, 80 units are being produced, and there is a loss then associated with some of these units. The marginal social cost exceeds the marginal benefit. These units provide more cost than they provide consumers with benefit, and that is going to be a loss. So we have another triangle here, and we're going to calculate the area of the triangle, but this time we're going to subtract it because this is a loss. We're doing something where the costs exceed the benefits. So the area of that triangle is going to be 50 minus 20 and 80 minus 50. And so total economic surplus here is $800. Let's look at what's socially optimum. The level of output is going to be 50. So the difference between the height of the demand curve and the marginal social cost curve up to that last unit consumed, the 50th unit, we get $1,250. And now let's look at the monopoly outcome. The monopolist produces 40 units, so it's going to be the difference between the height of the demand curve and the marginal social cost curve up to this 40th unit. And we got two areas here. We got a triangle and then a rectangle. So the triangle has dimensions of uh, 100 minus 60 and 40 minus 0 or 40. And then this rectangle area, 60 minus 50 times 40, and we get economic surplus of 1,200. 
So in the three cases, when the competitive outcome here, uh, which ignores externality, total economic surplus is 800. The monopoly outcome, which ignores the uh, negative externality is $1,200. And the socially optimal outcome is the highest at 1,250. So one thing that's interesting is if the government regulated the monopoly to be more competitive without addressing the externality, social welfare would actually decrease. So if you tried to make this monopoly do marginal cost pricing, for example, thinking social welfare would increase, it would actually reduce social welfare because a monopolist would be producing more units, and one of the large costs of producing more units is this external cost. All right, that's it. Hope you found this video helpful.